Hello, I am Farha Khan. This is Prof Talk. Iona Pacific Interreligious Center at the Vancouver School of Theology is a center that seeks to discover, model, and disseminate best practices in interreligious cooperation while addressing local and global issues. Iona Pacific came into being in 2009 when its founding director, Dr. Robert Daum, brought a vision to create a center where education and praxis meet. Its focus is simple research and teaching informs social action projects, and social action projects inform research and teaching. Its goals encompass education and advocacy, social action, dialogue, and leadership development. Dr. Robert Daum has been an associate professor of rabbinic literature and Jewish thought for many years, and throughout his career, he has been active in interreligious initiatives and educational administration. He's my guest today on Prof Talk, and he joins me now live in the CITR studio. Thank you, Robert, for coming in today. It's a pleasure. Let's begin with talking about how Iona Pacific Interreligious Center came into being. Why did you feel it was important to create such a center? I should say uh, that Iona Pacific was the vision of the Board of Governors and the faculty of Vancouver School of Theology, which has been on this campus for uh, several decades and is already a multi-denominational theological um, institution. VST went through a restructuring uh, a few years ago and created three centers under one roof. One of them is the center that houses the traditional work of Christian theological education. That's the Center for Christian Leadership. The other is the Indigenous Studies Center, which comes out of the deep relationships with over 40 First Nations uh, throughout this part of the continent with ties to indigenous communities around the world. And the third is the newest center, Iona Pacific. Um, I have the privilege and the pleasure of being the founding director, and of course I've had an opportunity to be a part of um, developing the vision and implementing the vision in ways that might not have been anticipated fully uh, when the center was launched, as is the case with many interesting ideas. Uh, but it is very much an expression of the, uh, the marriage of uh, learning and engagement with society that uh, has been a hallmark of Vancouver School of, School of Theology for, for a number of years. So tell us about the center. Uh, what kind of initiatives uh, is your center currently involved in? What are the kind of academic programs that you offer? Sure. We work in three domains. We work in the area of research and, uh, and teaching. Uh, we work in, in emerging youth leadership and we work on community initiatives. And as you uh, alluded to in your introduction, uh, they feed off of each other and they produce um, newer and deeper ways of engaging um, in the, the issues in each of the three. So in the area of teaching and, and scholarship, uh, it's really quite exciting. We have a, uh, two new degrees um, in indigenous and interreligious studies. Um, a master's uh, and uh, a master of theology and more advanced degree that we provide in uh, partnership with the, our Indigenous Studies Center uh, under uh, the umbrella of, of VST. The indigenous content is uh, guided by indigenous elders, so it is rooted in the indigenous communities. Uh, it's a fascinating um, initiative because of the um, juxtapositioning of different ways of knowing, different epistemologies. Um, and overlapping and very different um, approaches to the world among the various religious traditions. So students could specialize in either uh, the study of Judaism, Islam, Christianity, or First Nations spirituality, uh, and at the same time have the opportunity through an integrative seminar to learn about theory, method, and content uh, in the other areas that uh, students in those other areas are working on. We also invite visiting scholars uh, ranging from um, well, our Critical Conversations series that is underway now is really quite exciting. We brought um, uh, a professor from New York University, Elliot Wolfson, who's a world leader in research in Jewish mysticism. Um, we brought him in in partnership with UBC's Classical and Eastern and Religious Studies Department, where I also hold an adjunct appointment. Uh, we brought him in, uh, and he gave a series of presentations on mysticism, which were quite wonderful. And then we're bringing in on November 8th, 9th, and 10th um, uh, one of the leading thinkers um, in the area of Mediterranean studies, the Euro-Arab dialogue, 
a professor of Arabic and Islamic thought at the University of Sevilla in Spain, Emilio González Ferín, author of the standard study, uh, The History of Al-Andalus. That's in partnership with Green College at UBC, with the Center for the Comparative Study of Muslim Societies and Cultures at Simon Fraser University, um, with the Faculty of Creative and Critical Studies at UBC's Okanagan campus, and our own Iona Pacific Interreligious Center. This past summer we sponsored our first international conference, which we hosted with those same institutions, um, which was looking at, uh, the conference was looking at scriptures in medieval Iberia, Jewish, Muslim, and Christian encounters around sacred text, and that was in partnership uh, with additional uh, institutions, uh, the leading research center in the history of the Spanish language in Spain, uh, the University of uh, La Rioja, uh, and we brought in scholars from, uh, from uh, the United States, from Canada, and from Spain. We had simultaneous translation from Spanish into English with wireless headsets and so on. It's really quite exciting. Um, in March, we're bringing um, to this campus, uh, under the principal sponsorship of the Morris Wask Center for Dialogue at Simon Fraser University, one of the leading writers um, on religion in the world today, Karen Armstrong. She was awarded the TED Prize, founder of the Charter of Compassion, and a driving force behind the movement worldwide to encourage cities and other institutions to become more compassionate. Uh, she'll be here in March for, uh, for 12 days, and as a part of that visit, um, we at Iona Pacific have the opportunity to bring here to the UBC campus Karen Armstrong for a full day conference, principally for post-secondary students. Um, it'll be very, very exciting, uh, and that'll be an opportunity to engage in a conversation about where compassion can be found and how it can be nurtured more productively in religion by bringing together students from universities all over the region to engage in that conversation. There also will be Karen Armstrong book clubs that will be forming on this campus, so students who read her book, Twelve Steps to a Compassionate Life, uh, and engage in that process will have an opportunity to, uh, to register to attend uh, some of those events uh, with Karen Armstrong. And then in April and May, the end of April, for two days, we're bringing probably the most um, uh, important uh, scholar writing in the English language today on um, the Hebrew Bible, the First Testament, Robert Alter uh, from the University of California at Berkeley. Um, so that series is, is the kind of thing we do in the scholarship area. For uh, the area of youth leadership development, we have a dynamic uh, youth team of UBC students, Iona Pacific Youth. The co-leaders the co of that team are a student in the School of Nursing and a student at the Sauter School of Business. And uh, it's a wonderful dynamic group that, that works with other students to co-create solutions to uh, critical local and global issues, particularly in hands-on projects like working with uh, with folks to raise funds for uh, malaria nets, uh, like working together to find more um, welcoming ways to help to bring refugees and immigrants into our Canadian society, um, uh, other sorts of initiatives that they've been uh, engaged in, um, or microcredit challenge they did last year to um, raise funds uh, for an African youth entrepreneurship organization uh, through through an, uh, an auction. Um, so that's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for students to uh, engage with other students across um, ethno-religious lines that too many students don't uh, seek out and find opportunities to, to cross so that we can learn to work together and, and learn together more uh, productively um, as in, in Canada. And then the third area is community initiatives and we have some really exciting projects there. One of them is led by our postdoctoral fellow, Rosa Sevi, and it's a project working with mothers across religious boundaries um, who have in common uh, children of a similar age and it's been a, just a tremendous program uh, and in addition to that uh, we have a media project partnership with the Daniel Pearl Foundation um, uh, for which we've uh, done a lot of research in, in uh, collaboration with scholars at the Lew Institute for Global Issues, folks in critical media studies and others to try to develop ways to promote critical thinking about international conflicts. That's just some of what we're engaged in. You have a diverse academic background, and you completed a BA in political science uh, many years ago, an MA in Hebrew literature, and then later a PhD in your Eastern studies. But earlier in your career, you also were ordained as a rabbi. And so in what ways has your own spiritual background influenced um, the kind of work you're currently doing today? It's a really great question. Um, one of the 
One of the aspects of my work that I think is so um, helpful um, is to be able to recognize that the, 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 the some of the complexity of what it is to be a human being in the world. Um, we are not only physical beings, we're not only cognitive beings, um, we, we, we are also uh, people who feel, people who perceive, who sense, uh, people who have uh, a desire, uh, many of us, to uh, be able to uh, understand, um, to make meaning out of being a human being, uh, people who have a sense of history, are living in a world in which there are people who have needs that are far uh, more extreme or critical than our own. Um, and many of us, I think, at this stage in human history, um, are feeling a sense of urgency about the scale of problems that, that we face as human beings. Um, old approaches of working in isolation, um, working within uh, our, um, our kind of silo effect, um, we recognize here in the academy uh, at a great uh, research university like UBC, um, and certainly in theological education, uh, this is very much the case today. We recognize the importance of interdisciplinarity, of multidisciplinarity, of, of being familiar with and connecting with scholars who are making advances in other fields that might be relevant. Likewise, uh, human beings and societies are multifaceted, and um, we need at this time in our in our history, I believe, uh, to find ways to build new relationships, um, to reach out to uh, the um, ancestral um, uh, um, guardians of these lands, um, the, 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 uh, the Musqueam Nation here on this campus um, with the uh, Coast Salish peoples, the people who um, have been here for many, many generations and, and learn from their wisdom traditions. We need to find ways to, um, to draw on the deep resources the, of the wisdom traditions um, in Muslim societies and cultures, in various Christian uh, civilizations, and in Jewish tradition, in Buddhism, in Hinduism, in Sikhism, uh, and, and on and on and on. Um, because we cannot, um, uh, we cannot address in a critically effective way um, the uh, intellectual challenges, certainly not the social challenges that we face uh, as a planet unless we find uh, ways to work together more intentionally, more respectfully, uh, more creatively, um, and ultimately, I think, more productively. So because I worked in a community where I was engaged with, with folks from birth to death, as it were, uh, and had the opportunity to work across religious uh, boundaries, I started doing that very early in my, in my rabbinate, um, it, 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 it naturally lent itself to, to that kind of focus in my academic work. And I've always been interested in finding ways to engage the research, the learning, the teaching, and um, work in the community. And they, they, I learn a great deal from the engagement in the community that helps to enrich my research and my teaching. What is your goal at Iona Pacific since it's only been two years since its inauguration? What is your ultimate goal, Robert? My, my ultimate goal is for people who take religion seriously and who um, take seriously the, uh, the challenge of seeking to discover resources within religious traditions to address critical issues and who are interested in learning about the ways in which uh, religious cultures have, uh, have coexisted and have um, been entangled with each other and have been the part of, a part of the, the very complex multi-layered uh, fabric of of, of what has uh, brought us to this time in our history, um, that those people will want to work with us uh, so that folks in the Muslim community will look at Iona Pacific and say, this is my center. Mm -hmm. People in the, in the Christian community will say, this is my center. Folks in the Jewish community, First Nations, um, Sikhs, Hindus, Buddhist community, etc., etc., that they will see this as, as a place where they can come together and and, and engage with community leaders, with scholars, and with emerging student leaders um, more quickly across lines, across boundaries, uh, in order to, uh, to be able to um, move, move in a direction that is healthier for, for, our, for our planet and for our local community as well. 
So how can uh, people in the local community, whether they're UBC students, or whether they are faculty members, or the general public, how can they get involved with Iowa Pacific? Uh, that's a great question. For students on the campus um, who would like to engage with Iona Pacific Youth, uh, the way to do that is to send an email to ipyouth at ionapacific.ca. It's just ipyouth at ionapacific.ca. Um, others could send an email to info at ionapacific.ca or simply look at our website, uh, um, Iona Pacific not surprisingly, .ca, and, um, and come, to our, come to our events, get on our mailing list, um, and, and you will meet scholars from around the world, scholars locally, uh, community leaders, uh, and, and students uh, who, are, who are serious about learning, uh, about ways in which um, the, the challenges that religion poses and the uh, great resources and strengths that religion offers uh, to, to the human struggle to, uh, to survive uh, and to thrive in a way that is more in harmony with our planet and with each other. So there are lots of ways to get engaged uh, in particular projects, come to a lecture, attend a workshop. Um, in, if you're interested and you have ideas about something that you think might be uh, appealing to us, um, please do let us know. We're, we're, we, we have had a, a really wonderful opportunities to engage with research centers and scholars uh, in Europe, um, in, in China, um, with government um, folks in the government at the federal, provincial, and, and city level. Um, we're really grateful to uh, the province of BC and the government of Canada through their Embrace BC program that has provided support for our, um, our project program with mothers. Um, we're, we've benefited from, uh, from grants, from, from uh, foundations in the United States, here in Canada. Um, we have some wonderful projects underway. So if you're someone who's interested in um, working in a multidisciplinary way as a researcher, uh, as a student, um, or you want to roll up your sleeves and get engaged in some hands-on activities with emerging youth leaders or uh, tap into work being done in some of the wonderful community organizations with which we have the opportunity to work, uh, please do let us know. Um, one thing that's interesting to point out is um, that we are um, we're supported by the administrative structure of Vancouver School of Theology. They launched us, they created us, but we have the, the challenge and the responsibility to become self-sustaining. In order to do that, and in order to um, create a center that really is um, representative of um, and guided by the um, the, uh, the various uh, community stakeholders uh, around us, um, we've created an advisory council um, that consists of, um, of First Nations leaders, Muslim community leaders, Jewish community leaders, Christian community leaders, uh, and we will be growing to beyond the so-called Abrahamic uh, traditions as well, of course. That's where our, our research strengths were to begin with, and certainly the three Abrahamic faiths have had a long uh, and, and complex and not always easy history. So we, that's where we started with, of course, our First Nations partners on whose lands we sit and who's about whose wisdom traditions um, we know too little. Um, but we will be uh, growing beyond that initial base. So there, there, there are, uh, there's also a program committee um, that consists of that uh, diverse range of folks. Uh, so there are many, many ways to connect with us, and we'd love to hear from you. I'd like to ask you about what you're currently doing at SFU because it does relate to this sure. work and I think it's very interesting. Yeah, this is really exciting. Um, we, um, we, are, we co developed a course this semester um, which is offered um, at the uh, world renowned uh, Morris Wask Center for Dialogue at Simon Fraser University. Um, there was an article in the Globe and Mail a month ago that was addressing uh, in a pretty tough way some of the challenges that uh, research universities are facing in, in, in uh, the area of undergraduate education. Um, it's a complex problem and um, the undergraduate semester in Dialogue at SFU, um, which is open to, uh, to some UBC students uh, every year, um, changes its theme every semester. Um, and there are wonderful programs here at UBC that also um, do some of this kind of work. Uh, the formula at SFU is really quite fascinating, and it's an opportunity to learn about dialogue um, as a way of being in the world, engaging in the workplace and in, in various issues, particularly 
in the public square. So um, I'm one of three teachers um, in this course that we developed together with the Wask Center um, with Iona Pacific over the last 18 months. Um, uh, so I bring religion to the table, as it were. Uh, uh, the other instructor is the academic director of the Wask Center for Dialogue, Dr. Mark Winston, who is um, probably the world's leading bee and pollen scientist. Some of you may have seen him putting a bee beard on Rick Mercer on uh, the Rick Mercer Report a couple of years ago. And the third instructor is a wonderful educational and analytical philosopher named Hee Soon Bai. She's in the Faculty of Education at, uh, at SFU. And together, the three of us are, are facilitating this course, which is entitled Religion, Spirituality, Contemplative Inquiry, and Social Action. And there are 16 students in it. A uh, grad student at SFU, 13, uh, 12 undergraduates from across the disciplines, and then three students from uh, Iona Pacific and Vancouver School of Theology. And the student projects are engaged in the world, in the real world, in the city. There will be a public dialogue, uh, there will be uh, an analysis of the way, ways in which a, a particular religious organization in the community is addressing a critical social issue, uh, there will be individual projects. It's really a phenomenal opportunity. It's five days a week, nine to five for the students, although they're not sitting in chairs, of course, they're out in the city doing all kinds of amazing things. And there will be another semester of that next, 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 uh, next term. It's the 23rd time that SFU has done this. And uh, what I love about it is uh, that it's, it's, it's pushing me to rethink the way I approach teaching. I've always um, been engaged in teaching in an experiential way, that is, experiential education. I think students teach students best, they learn from each other. We all say that, and many of us do that in the classroom. Um, but I think the Wask Center uh, is really a world leader in this model, and that's why the Globe and Mail singled them out uh, for the, the great strengths. And as I said, there are many programs here on this UBC campus that are also uh, really exceptional uh, in terms of innovative ways they're addressing the undergraduate experience. Uh, but I'm thrilled to have this opportunity this fall at SFU. That's right. Well, thank you, Robert. It's been such a pleasure uh, to have you on the show, and uh, best of luck with all of these incredible initiatives. Thank you, Farha. This is Prof Talk on UBC CITR 101.9 FM in Vancouver and via live, live web streaming on CITR.ca. I've just been speaking with Dr. Robert Daum from the Iona Pacific Interreligious Center located in the Vancouver School of Theology, which is situated right here on the UBC campus. For more details about the center, please visit www.ionapacific.ca. If you would like to hear an audio or video podcast of this show, please visit proftalk.ubc.ca or email us at prof.talk at ubc.ca. I'm going to end today's show with some flamenco music by Paco de Lucia. I am Farha Khan. Thank you for listening today. <laughs>